Hey everybody, Alex Machagas here, coming to you guys from live from the lovely cutting room at Mr. Ground Studios here in Dallas, Texas. And it's time for another installment of my Tone Talk vlog series, a vlog where I, a session guitarist, give you guys tips on how you can sound better at home, on stage, or in the studio. Today we're going to be checking out a new pedal acquisition. I got this a few weeks ago. I'm super excited to share about it with you guys today. It's a rare pedal. It's something you may or may not heard of before, but it's called the Roger Mayer Page One Distortion Pedal. This is the original distortion pedal Roger Mayer made for Jimmy Page in 1964 when he was just a session guitarist, way before he was ever in the Yardbirds of Led Zeppelin, and that's what we're going to be checking out today. So, I'm going to go over some history of Roger Mayer and the Page One. I'm going to go over what makes the guitar pedal so special, and more importantly, how you can use a germanium fuzz in your guitar rig today. So let's get to it. So as for the history of Roger Mayer, Roger Mayer is an electrical whiz. He's an electronics guru. He's an electrical engineer. He's from the UK, and he has worked with some of the most iconic guitar players of all time, including Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, He's even worked with Bob Marley, which is pretty cool. He built the original synthesizers for Stevie Wonder for Music of My Mind, Talking Book, Inner Visions. Those are some of my favorite Stevie Wonder albums, and he's helped create all of those with his understanding of electronics. So let's talk about the history of the Page One, and more importantly, a little bit of history on Roger Mayer and why he's someone you should know uh, when talking about electric guitar. Roger Mayer was a really cool electrical engineer from England. Uh, he came of age in the 1960s, I did a lot of people. He studied electrical engineering and he even worked for the British Admiralty, making radar systems and other electronics for wartime in the Cold War, which is insanely cool. His real passion, however, was music, and he would spend many a night after work working for the British government, going out and hanging in underground clubs, hanging out with the likes of Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix. So he became friends with these guys and he realized these guys need some help getting some sounds that they want to do live and they can't recreate in the studio. So he set out to design consistent units that these guitar players could have to get, help them get these distortion tones. It's pretty cool. Many of the guitar players that Roger Mayer would go on to meet, including Jimmy Page, Clapton, Hendrix, they would go on to become the most iconic guitarists ever. So this guy was hanging out with the real people at the right time, and then he just kind of invented a job for himself, which is really cool. So many of these guitarists were always looking for a new way to push their electric guitar amplifiers into various types of distortion. Mr. Mayer began to look into ways to engineer consistent units to help guitarists get a consistent tone from night to night. The Page One is a recreation of the original distortion pedal he made Jimmy Page in 1964 when he was still working as a recording session guitarist. This is pre-Yardbirds, pre-Led Zeppelin, baby. The original fuzz box or distortion pedal that Mr. Mayer made Jimmy Page was very similar to a popular fuzz box in America at the time, the Gibson Maestro Fuzz Tone. The Maestro Fuzz Tone was later, a year later, used by the Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards when recording Satisfaction. But what's really cool is the iconic Roger Mayer distortion box was actually the first distortion pedal ever recorded in the history of British music. It was the first number one hit that had a distortion pedal on it. Mr. Mayer's version of the Gibson Maestro Fuzz Tone was the first commercially recorded fuzz sound on a hit record in the UK. His hit version of the fuzz pedal featured a pair of what are now iconic AC-128 transistors, which help provide a huge amount of distortion slash fuzz for your guitar tone. The real secret to this unit, and I think why session players like Jimmy Page and Big Jim Sullivan liked it so much when recording, is there is a fatness control on the front of the Page One. And what this allows you to do is shape the level of saturation in your distortion. Do you want a thinner sounding distortion? Do you want a fat low end? It all, it's very, very intuitive. It really helps shape the tone in recording situations and helps you use the unit when using different guitars or even different amplifiers. It's a really great tool. So as I said previously, the Page One is an exact recreation by Roger Mayer of the original fuzz box he made for Jimmy Page during his session work days. Page went on to use this guitar effect in the Yardbirds, which was his first band before Zeppelin, and him and Jeff Beck would even share the box on certain tones, and they would use things like the Fender Telecaster to help them get that level of raunchy, psychedelic distortion. 
the page one sound is raw, gnarly, open, rude. But here's what's strange. It's really low gain when compared to modern dirt boxes. So what you need to do when you're working with this type of a distortion pedal is you really have to crank your guitar ramp to help the pedal achieve the tones you want. It was meant to be used in combination with a tube amplifier turned up so you can start getting a really great singing distortion tone. This is something that's really underlooked when people are experimenting with pedals in your guitar amp. They're meant to work in unison together. If you don't have them working well together, you're not gonna get the sound and you might think that pedal is a dud when instead you're just not using it correctly. Other really useful features on the page one include buffered built-in outputs, which are designed to run really long cable links in the studio, so you don't have to be in the mix room, or excuse me, in the cutting room with your Marshall amp, you can be in the mix room and listen back through the studio mains and you don't have to blow your ears out. I think that's a really useful feature, and more importantly, you won't lose any signal loss from it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I can say from Tone Terrace everywhere, thank you very much, sir. So let's check out some different tones. Uh, I'm gonna go through uh, my Texas Guitar Workshop Telecaster here. This one's a little more like Jimmy Page's Dragoncaster. Um, I really like this guitar. Jumbo frets, uh, all nitro finish, vintage style pickups, gold hardware, really, really cool. And then I think I'll switch to a Les Paul for different sounds. I'm gonna be running through a Marshall Super Bass Plexi 71 over here in the mix room with the door shut. So let's check it out, guys. <laughs>